I now welcome our final witness this afternoon. Andrea Shea Moss. Ms. Moss worked in the Department of Registration and Elections in Fulton County, Georgia from 2017 until 2022. In that job, Ms. Moss handled voter applications and absentee ballot requests and also helped to process the vote count for several elections. In December 2020, Ms. Moss and her mother, Ms. Ruby Freeman, became the target of nasty lies spread by President Trump and his allies as they sought to overturn the election results in Georgia. Ms. Moss and her mother, Ms. Freeman, are two of the unsung heroes in this country doing the hard work of keeping our democracy functioning for every American. Ms. Moss, welcome. Thank you for your service and I thank you for being here today. Uh, I will now swear you in. Please stand. Do you swear or affirm on the penalty of perjury that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Please be seated. Let the record reflect that the witness answered in the affirmative. Ms. Wa Ms. Moss, thank you very much for being here today. I understand that you are here along with your mother today. Uh, would you like to introduce your mama? Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, Ms. Moss, today we'll be asking you about some of the threats that you received following the 2020 election. Since you've been an election worker for over 10 years, I want to ask you, in your decade of service, had you ever experienced threats like these before? Uh, don't be nervous. Just, I understand. So, uh, and, and I want to make sure that the record reflects that you've done it for quite a while and you never received a threat and your answer was no. Thank you. Pursuant to Section 5C8 of the House Resolution 503, the chair recognizes a gentleman from California, Mr. Schiff, for questions. Good afternoon, Ms. Moss. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, I understand that you were employed by the Fulton County Registration and Elections Department uh, for more than 10 years, uh, and I understand that you love that job. Uh, please tell us what made you so fond of the work that you did. Um, well, I've always um, been told by my grandmother how important it is to vote and how people before me, a lot of people, um, older people in my family did not have that right. So what I loved most um, about my job were the older voters. Um, younger people could usually do everything from their phone or go online, but the older voters like to call. They like to talk to you. They like to get my card. They like to know that every election I'm here. Um, and like even college students, a lot of parents um, trust in me to make sure their child does not have to drive home. They'll get an absentee ballot. They can vote. And I really found pleasure in that. I liked being the one that, um, you know, if someone can't navigate my voter page or, you know, they want a new precinct card and they don't have a copy machine or a computer or all of that, I could put it in the mail for them. Um, I was excited always about sending out all the absentee ballots for the elderly, disabled people. Um, I even remember driving to a um, hospital to give someone her absentee application. Um, that's, that's what I love the most. 
So you really enjoyed helping people vote and participate, and, uh, and that was something, uh, the right to vote, that your grandmother taught you was precious. Yeah. Well, I know the events that we're here to talk about today are incredibly difficult to relive. Your proud service as an election worker took a dramatic turn on the day that Rudy Giuliani publicized the video of you and your mother counting ballots on election night. President Trump, Rudy Giuliani, and others claimed on the basis of this video that you and your mother were somehow involved in a plot to kick out observers, bring suitcases of false ballots for Biden into the arena, and then run them through the machines multiple times. None of that was true, was it? None of it. I'd like to show you some of the statements that Rudy Giuliani made in a second hearing before the Georgia State Legislators, a week after that video clip from State Farm Arena was first circulated by Mr. Giuliani and President Trump. I want to advise viewers that these statements are completely false and also deeply disturbing. Tape earlier in the day of Ruby Freeman and Shay Freeman Moss and one other gentleman quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they are vials of heroin or cocaine. I mean, it's, our it's, it's obvious to anyone who's a criminal investigator or prosecutor, they are engaged in surreptitious illegal activity again that day. And that's a week ago, and they're still walking around Georgia lying. Should have been, they should have been, uh, should have been questioned already. Uh, their places of work, their homes should have been searched for evidence of ballots, for evidence of USB ports, for evidence of voter fraud. That video was from Rudy Giuliani's appearance at a Georgia State Senate hearing on December 10. How did you become aware, how did you first become aware that Rudy Giuliani, the president's lawyer, was accusing you and your mother of a crime? I was at work, like always, um, and the former chief, Mr. Jones, asked me to come to his office. And um, when I went to his office, the former director, Mr. Barron, was in there, and they showed me a video on their computer. Um, it was just like a very short clip of us working at State Farm, and it had someone on the video like talking um, over the video, just saying that we were doing things that we weren't supposed to do, just lying um, throughout the video. And that's when I first found out about it. And were there social media posts uh, that they showed you responding to those false claims? Well, um, when, when I saw the video, of course, the first thing that I said was like, why? What, why, is, why are they doing this? What's going on? And um, they, you know, just told me that Trump and his allies were not satisfied with the outcome of the election and they they were getting a lot of threats and um, being harassed online and asked me, you know, have I been receiving anything and I need to check on my mom. And I told them, um, I, you know, I was like, where, where have they, you know, where have you been getting these threats? I, I don't believe I have any. And um, Mr. Jones told me like they're attacking his uh, Facebook and I don't really use Facebook. I have one. So I went to the Facebook app and I'm just kind of panicky at this point because this has never happened to me and my mom is involved and I'm like her only child. So I'm just asking him like, well, where are the messages? All I see is the feeds. Like, how do you get to the messages? And he said, it's another icon on your phone that says messenger. And I went to that icon, and it was just a lot of horrible things there. And those horrible things, did they include threats? Yes, a, a lot of threats, um, wishing death upon me, um, 
telling me that, you know, I'm, I'll be in jail with my mother and saying things like, be glad it's 2020 and not 1920. That's, yeah. Were, were a lot of these threats and, and vile comments racist in nature? A lot of them were racist. A lot of them were just hateful. Um, but yes, sir. In one of the videos we just watched, Mr. Giuliani accused you and your mother of passing some sort of USB drive to each other. Uh, what was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. It wasn't just Rudy Giuliani. We heard President Trump make these false allegations repeatedly during his call with Secretary Raffensperger. Let's listen to a portion of what he had to say about you and your mother. We had uh, at least 18,000 that's on tape. We had them counted very painstakingly. 18,000 voters uh, having to do with uh, Ruby Freeman. That's, uh, she's a vote scammer, a professional vote scammer and hustler. Donald Trump attacked you and your mother using her name 18 times on that call. 18 times. Ms. Moss, can you describe uh, what you experienced listening to former President Trump attack you and your mother in a call with the Georgia Secretary of State? I felt horrible. I felt like it was all my fault. Like, if I would have never decided to be an elections worker, like, I could have on anything else, but that's what I decided to do. And now people are lying and spreading rumors and lies and attacking my mom, I'm her only child, going to my grandmother's house, I'm her only grandchild, and, and my kid. It's just, um, I felt so bad. I, I just felt bad for my mom and I felt horrible for picking this job and being the one that always wants to help and always there and never missing not one election. I just felt like it was, it was my fault for putting my family in this situation. Well, it, it wasn't your fault. Uh, your mother was kind enough to come speak with us earlier. Let's listen to her story and her words. My name is Ruby Freeman. I've always believed that when God says that he'll make your name great, but this is not the way it was supposed to be. I could have never imagined the events that followed the presidential election 2020. For my entire professional life, I was Lady Ruby. My community in Georgia, where I was born and lived my whole life, knew me as Lady Ruby. I built my own business around that name, La Ruby's Unique Treasures, a pop-up shop catering to ladies with unique fashions. I wore a shirt that proudly proclaimed that I was, and I am, Lady Ruby. Actually, I had that shirt on. I had that shirt in every color. I wore that shirt on election day 2020. I haven't worn it since, and I'll never wear it again. <laughs> now I won't even introduce myself by my name anymore. I get nervous when I bump into someone I know in the grocery store who says my name. I'm worried about who's listening. I get nervous when I have to give my name for food orders. I'm always concerned of who's around me. I've lost my name and I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security. All because a group of people starting with number 45 and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay, to push their own lies about how the presidential election was stolen. Ms. Moss, how has this experience of being targeted by the former president and his allies affected your life? He's turned my life upside down. Um, 
I no longer give out my business card. I don't transfer calls. I um, don't want anyone knowing my name. I don't want to go anywhere with my mom because she might yell my name out over the grocery aisle or something. I don't go to the grocery store at all. I haven't been anywhere um, at all. I've gained about 60 pounds. I just don't do nothing anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I second guess everything that I do. Um, it's affecting my life in a, in a major way, in every way, all because of lies. For me doing my job, same thing I've been doing forever. Your mother also told the select committee about how she had to leave her own home for her safety and go into hiding after the FBI told her that it would not be safe for her there before January 6th and until the inauguration. Let's listen to a clip of her story in her own words. Around the week of January 6th, the FBI informed me that I needed to leave my home for safety. Um, And I left my home for safety around that time. Understood. How, how long did you stay out? Did you, you know, remain outside of your home for your own safety? I, I stayed away from my home for approximately two months. It was horrible. I felt homeless. I felt, you know, I can't believe, I can't believe this person has caused this much damage to me and my family um, to have to leave my home that I've lived there for 21 years. And, you know, I'm having to have my neighbors watch out for me, you know, um, and I have to go and stay with somebody. It was hard, it was horrible. And the, um, your conversation with the FBI about needing to leave your home for your, your own safety or perhaps recommending it, um, do you remember, was there a specific threat that prompted that, or was it the accumulation of, of threats that you had received? What prompted it was, um, was getting ready to January 6th was about to come, and they did not want me to be at home because of all the threats and everything that I had gotten. They didn't want me to be there in fear of, you know, the people would come into my home and I had a lot of that. So they didn't want me to be there just in case something happened. I asked, how long am I going to have to be at home? They said, at least until the inauguration. Ms. Moss, I understand that people once uh, showed up at your grandmother's house. Uh, tell us about that experience. Um, I received a call from my grandmother. This woman is my everything. I've never even heard her or seen her cry ever in my life. And um, she called me screaming at the top of her lungs like, Shay, Shay, oh my God, Shay, just freaking me out, saying that um, there were people at her home and they, um, you know, they knocked on the door and of course she opened it and seeing who was there, who it was, and they just started pushing their way through, claiming that they were coming in to make a citizen's arrest. They needed to find me and my mom. They knew we were there. Um, and she was just like, screaming and, and didn't know what to do. And I, I wasn't there so you know i just felt so helpless and so horrible for her and she um was just screaming i told her to close the door don't open the door for for anyone and um you know she's a 70 something i won't say a year old woman and she she doesn't like having restrictions she wants to answer the door she likes to get her steps in walking around the neighborhood and I had to tell her, like, you can't do that. You, you have to be safe. Um, 
you know, she would tell me that at night um, people would just continuously send pizzas over and over to her home, um, you know, and they were expecting her to pay for these large amounts of pizzas. And, and she went through a lot that she didn't um, have to. And once again, it made me just feel so horrible. In addition to the personal impact this experience has had on you and your family, one of the things that I find most disturbing is how these lies discourage longtime election workers from continuing to do this important work. Tell us, if you would, of the other election workers shown in that State Farm Arena video and their supervisors. How many are still election workers in Fulton County? Um, there is no permanent election worker or supervisor in that video that's still there. And did you end up leaving your, leaving your position as well? Yes, I, I left. Ms. Moss, I want to thank you for coming in to speak with us and to thank you for your service uh, to our democracy. What we have just played is a truly horrible and appalling sample, but just a sample of the things that were said about you and your mother following the election. I want to say how very sorry I think we all are for what you've gone through, and tragically, you're not alone. Other election workers around the country have also been the subject of lies and threats. No election worker should be subject to such heinous treatment just for doing their job. With your permission, I would like to give your mother the last word. Yes. We're just going to play the tape. There is nowhere I feel safe. Nowhere. Do you know how it feels to have the President of the United States to target you. The President of the United States is supposed to represent every American, not to target one, but he targeted me, Lady Ruby, a small business owner, a mother, a proud American citizen who stand up to help Fulton County run an election in the middle of the pandemic. Thank you, Ms. Moss. Thank you, Ms. Freeman, or as America now knows her, Lady Ruby, for your service to Fulton County, Georgia, our country, and our democracy. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Schiff. Ms. Moss, yes, sir. I want to thank you for sharing with us the very troubling story of what you and your mother experienced. The harassment of election workers like you simply for doing your duty as public servants poses a threat to our democratic process. Your testimony is an important contribution to the work of our committee and serves as a reminder to all of us that the safety of local election officials is vital to ensuring that our elections are always free and fair.